Hello, this is James Berger. We're back with Off the Press and our guest, Jen Bloomquist, current high school district trustee. And, of course, my uh, intrepid uh, co-hosts, Russ Johnson and Nicole Parra. Um, and, but we do have someone else in the room who is a font of information about the current high school district and uh, all its goings on, and that is uh, uh, education reporter Harold Pierce, who's been punching holes in the stories about this for months. Uh, Harold... Could, do you have any thoughts or questions in this uh, when we're talking? Yeah, this? sure, I sure do. Yeah, you know, I, I am curious. You know, Chad Vegas, you're running to replace. He had recently lambasted uh, fellow trustee uh, Jeff Flores over a, a PR contract, and I think that what he had talked about during the meeting is he had, he had really had a problem with Jeff Flores challenging uh, a staff recommendation, an administrative recommendation from uh, to the board. And he'd said in his 12 years of working on the board there, he had never seen that before. So I guess having said that, I mean, how do you view the role of a trustee in that capacity? I mean, if they've never had trustees challenging the board before, uh, what is the role of a trustee, I wonder, in your view? Um, I think the trustees should challenge. I think it's their job to ask questions and make sure that not only is California state law being upheld, but we're being accountable to taxpayers and we're spending their money wisely and we're spending it on educating children, not for paying a PR company that's going to maybe do an okay job. Because that seemed to be Jeff Loris's main concern was that he didn't think that it was up to, their, their presentation wasn't up to what it should be. and. I, I would believe that he has a legitimate concern there. And I don't think I don't think Kern High School District deserves, you know, whatever they can get. I think they deserve better. Um along those lines, um how would you hold the the administrators uh, accountable? The, uh, you've you've talked a little bit earlier in the show about uh doing building relationships and trying to um uh accomplish goals with positive attitude and with decent uh, civility. Um, but sometimes you got to be tough, even if it is behind the scenes. How do you deal with uh, situations where things aren't going the way that you want them to go, and how, do you, uh, how would you uh, encourage the administrators to move in the direction you believe was right? Uh, well, I did. I did appreciate their their idea of having a trustee sit in on the on the presentations, and especially if if the trustee actually has some knowledge of what, say it's it's like the situation with the with the PR company, um, if a trustee has some knowledge on PR and media relations, then I think it's a good idea for them to sit in and and listen and make sure that what the companies are bringing them is up to what the district deserves. So um, as you look at the district today and the district five years from now and the district 10 years from now, what do you say the district ha doesn't have today that it needs? And what do you think you, how do you think you'll help the district get there and, get, and accomplish that? I would say right now, the district, they need more career technical education. They need, to, they need to focus on that because unfortunately, not all students are going to go to universities. They're not gonna go to college. That's, it's unfortunate, but it's a fact around in this district. And so making sure that students get a good education that will see them through to a career that will allow them to live a decent life, that's, that's pretty much the most important thing that I would like to see done in, in the next five years, as well as having comprehensive education when it comes to health and sex education. Because again, like the, the, Kern, the Kern County teen pregnancy rate is incredibly high and it has been shown that when you educate boys and girls about everything related to sex education, then those teen pregnancy rates fall dramatically. It's, it's been coming out in the news lately that they're seeing these drops, these dramatic drops in teen pregnancy rates. 
in districts where they have comprehensive sex education. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I would like to see in the next five years instead of in the next five years seeing another article about how Kern County tops the list for teen pregnancy rates. Mm -hmm. So more than just a health class, you would like to see um, you know, more of uh, education. What do you mean by comprehensive? Um, well, for an example, I actually, I co-founded Pro-Choice Kern County. Okay. And not only are we pro-choice, we are pro, we are, we are pro-abstinence, we are pro-contraceptive, we are, we are pro-pregnancy, pro-babies, if that's what the woman chooses. But most of all, to prevent unwanted pregnancies, we are pro-contraceptives and pro-abstinence. Mm -hmm. But those two things need to be taught. Because again, that's another mm -hmm. unfortunate fact of life that kids are going to do things that kids shouldn't do mm -hmm. at some ages. And so we, but we need to educate them still. We mm -hmm. need to bring them out of the bubble and educate them on these matters. Mm -hmm. And do you think that starts with the parents? Um, as you know, religion plays a big part in why um, some parents don't want their children in learning more about sex education or contraception. Um, you know, how would you handle that hurdle with dealing with the parents? I mean, it's been tried by different um, trustees to get a more comprehensive sex education in the high school districts. How would you work with the parents? I know working with the parents mm -hmm. can, can be kind of tough. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen it with, um, with implementing Common Core. Mm -hmm. Parents get kind of resistant to that. And so I know that just that educating the parents mm -hmm. is something that the, that the district has to do as well. And I know that that would be a big leap mm -hmm. and pretty hard. And, and I know the parents have their beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I'm the last person who wants to, to infringe upon somebody's belief. But we have to educate the mm -hmm. students. We can tell them that you have your beliefs, and that's that's mm -hmm. amazing. You you stick to your beliefs, but here's the education that you need to get on in life. Mm -hmm. Right. So as you're you're looking at all these different things, you, you've got a you're talking to the parents. You're you're seeing all these things you want to work on. When you get in there and you take that first day, and you you know, you take the oath of office, and you're up there, and you're responsible and you get hit with the normal day-to-day -day of the board member, which is vote yes on this contract, vote no on this, vote vote yes on all these things that may seem mundane and very, very uh, simple. And trust me, they're there. You know, that's proving, when I was on the city council, we're approving a new stoplight, and you're, you're approving this, and you're, you're looking at all this stuff that takes all this, you know, in some ca cases, time, but also it's just so routine. That consent what, agenda that's a mile yeah. long, yeah. What, what's going to keep you motivated to just keep going day in, day out, reading your packet, making sure you're you're ready to go? Because I think as elected officials, it's like sometimes you get into this grind and you have to have that thing that motivates you. What do you, what do you think is going to be motivating you day in, day out to keep being a responsible board member? I would say doing doing good by my friends who are teachers, doing good by my friends who have kids in the district, making sure that their kids are educated and grow up to have lives of their own and kids of their own who will be educated in the district, making sure that when I eventually do have kids who will be educated at the Kern High School District, um, I want to make sure that whatever I leave behind as a trustee would only go to positively affect their education and make sure that they, they get the best possible education that they could. And that's why I wanna see us leave behind all this political rhetoric nonsense that we've been focusing on lately and get back to actual education. One last qu question for me, and then I'll let, because uh, I know I've asked a lot, but um, when you look at, um, you know, you talked about conflict of interest a couple different times, and this is really just a question about your business, because we didn't ask you a little bit about this Stars and Stripes tree service. Do you, is it all just people's homes, or are you doing businesses, or do you do any public contracts? We, we do have a public contract with the city of Bakersfield. Okay. 
Um, and I would be very careful to recuse myself of any discussions, any votes um, regarding a contract with my business if, if I were to be a trustee. Do, I think I know your dad. Did he live off Hughes? Yes, that's my dad. I knocked on his door when I was running for city council. Sorry. <laughs> right, no, <laughs> I love it. Just love a, it. a little bit of a co- political yeah. geek moment there. Yeah, yeah sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have his nose. memory, the street and the name. Oh, yeah. That's, you that's yeah, I, I have his nose, uh. most definitely. So, yeah, 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 Butch, Butch Swen. Mm. That's, yeah. that's my dad. He, uh, he was running Swen Tree Service and... Then he passed it on to me, passed the torch on to me, and I got my contractor's license, and I was ready to go. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And so, uh, to, yeah, and, to, and I guess we can uh, take it back to a little bit about uh, you, and, and you, you said you were active in, in uh, some some pub, some groups here, obviously the pro-choice group. Um, what are some of the other groups that kind of motivated your political uh, interest in politics and your political activity here in uh, well, I, I was actually an organizer for a group called Drinking Liberally. Now, it's not that we all went to a bar and drank liberally. Mostly, we just sat around and ate pizza, drank sodas, and talked about geeky stuff like comics and The Walking Dead. And I might have heard of that. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. It's just a little show. Never. You know you want to be a member. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been president of the Bakersfield Democratic Club. I was a delegate to the state of California for the Democratic Party. Mm. Uh, I've been a member of the Kern County Democratic Central Committee. I'm currently a member of the Democratic Women of Kern. And I, I found it, I did actually found a um, kind of philanthropic group who's worked with a lot of different agencies in town. We've, we've done fundraisers and we've done like collections for the animal shelter. We've worked with flood ministries. We have worked, um, we've done collections for the Jameson Center. Mm -hmm. Usually every year we would do a collection for a different group. And it's made up of a lot of different people from different walks of life, Um, actually a lot of educators as well, um, who who might consider themselves a a nun, as an N-O-N-E and not N-U-N. So that's, and, and we wanted to get out there and we wanted to do good with a whole bunch of other groups Mm -hmm. that we also saw doing good. That include churches, public agencies, Mm -hmm. and all Mm -hmm. kinds of just people. Mm -hmm. Is none kind of a group that no party affiliation, no religious affiliation, is that, I'm curious, is that a a new, is that a a different kind of movement here in Kern County? The the nuns. The nuns? Yeah, um, I have seen seen that start to pick up Mm around here and yeah it's it's a group of people mm-hmm. who um don't necessarily um identify with a specific mm-hmm. religion mm-hmm. they might not identify with a specific uh, political mm-hmm. party um and i mean and for me personally like i've i've been invited uh, later on this year mm-hmm. to speak to the unitarian universalist church here in town um so it's it's something we just mm-hmm. all kind of mm-hmm. get together and do right that's great all right. Well, we're drawing to the end. So uh, thank you very much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. It's been great to get to know you. And uh, as always, we thank Harold Pierce and Russ and Nicole for coming on and keeping me honest. <laughs> and uh, that is it for today on uh, Off the Press. Please uh, come back next week. We've got a couple of candidates. We've got uh, mm-hmm. a uh, candidate for uh, school board as well. I mm-hmm. believe Kern High School District on uh, Lee Vasquez. Lee on Vasquez. Wednesday. And, uh, and then we have uh, Mr. McLeod, who's running against Jackie Sullivan for the city council. Should be a great mm-hmm. week. That's on Tuesday or Wednesday. Wednesday. And, uh, and we come back Nick, off the press next week. Thank you so much for being here tonight, today, and we'll talk to you later.